All right, uh, so let's move on to the next topic. And, and I'm actually going to switch it up here. Uh, you know, we have had an interest in uh, a lot of entertainment stuff that has been happening recently. So I figured that, Dana, basically you can be the one to lead this topic. But essentially, we found out this week that uh, Disney tried to make an offer to buy Fox and, and, and you know, trying to get the rights to both X-Men, Fantastic Four, and all of the stuff that Fox has. And apparently the talks have stalled now. We don't really know what the current status is of that. But Dana, feel free to tell us more about this story in particular. Okay, what happened was, <laughs> over the week, um, it was reported that Marvel, I mean, not Marvel, sorry, Disney, which owns on Marvel and every other entity in the world, um, they have begun talks with 20th Century Fox, and that they're trying to buy them out for billions and billions of dollars. And what happened was people, they are mixed reporting. The thing is that they're saying is that talks have stalled. They have stalled, but no one is saying no. They want to buy them out, and they're going to be able to own the TV and movie properties. This is both good and bad for fans. Obviously, we'll finally get Fantastic Four, and we can finally get a decent movie that we so desperately need. At the same time, what does this mean for, pro for the property like Deadpool? Is Deadpool now going to be a Disney prince? So there's the good and the bad that comes with it. And what ended up happening was the talk stalled. It didn't stop. They're reporting that it stopped. It never stopped. Um, what it did do was stall. They really can't reach a deal. But because of all of the talking and all of the news being spread around, um, 20th century stocks, their shares jumped very big. And so people are trying to figure out how this is, is going to work out. They're also trying to, what happened is the reason that they, they, they want to do the deal is that they want... 20th Century Fox itself wants to focus on more news and sports. So as a result, they need to figure out what to do with their entertainment property. So right now, people are just waiting to figure out what happened. They're trying to go about with this deal, but they can't seem to make it with the money. They don't know how to divide the property. And it's going to be a lot of talking. And this is something that if it, you know, is going to end up being into 2018, probably in the middle of 2018 where we'll finally get an answer whether or not that they're going to buy them or they're not going to. So right now, everyone's excited. Some people are very angry, and I'm just in, in the middle. So that's what happened. All right. Thank you for the explanation. Um, so I know Gary has a few things he wants to say. Uh, go ahead, Gary, and then I'll, I'll, go, I'll go after you. Yeah, I, I think this buyout would be best for everyone um because with fox whenever i hear anything about fox it's usually negative like you know fox news and you know everything like that i'm sure if they had like a fox sports network or whatever it wouldn't be great either um and you know as for the movies i mean the first few x-men films were okay um obviously not the third one but um you know um the, the first two and uh first class and, you know, a few of the ones after that were, were good. Um, of course, Logan was good. Um, and Deadpool was great, you know. Now, those movies definitely need to merge with what Marvel's doing with their movies. Like, uh, we, we need that crossover. Like, we need that Avengers versus X-Men. And, you know, all those classic storylines that can't be done unless they unify, you know, these properties. Like, we need to see that. Like, you know, we, we've already, you know, we, we've been given a lot of great Marvel movies already. And it's about to peak with, you know, Th Thanos coming and everything in uh, in the next few movies. But after that, there's like nothing. There's just going to be a huge void. Um, obviously, they're going to introduce new characters and stuff that we haven't seen on screen yet. But um, there's still going to be a void after, you know, Thanos. So we need that, like we need the X-Men, we need Fantastic Four, we need Deadpool to be a part of the MCU. Like it, it just needs to happen. And I think this is a great move. And furthermore as well, there's been a lot of talk about Disney starting their own 
streaming service. Um, and apparently that's going to come into fruition in 2018. And I saw a few news articles this week saying that Disney is, is they're, they're going to be bold enough to actually remove all of those amazing Marvel TV shows off of Netflix and bring it to their streaming service just because they can do that. And that's going to have a major impact, you know, if that happens. Um, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Netflix. Um, and people were having, people have even been saying that um, Netflix should consider merging with Disney. So, like, Disney is very powerful right now. And I understand that that's a scary thing because you don't want one company to have the monopoly, you know, because... Uh, if you look at WWE, that's that's always where things go bad, like when one company is like the dominant force. So, yeah, it is scary. But at the same time, I think this move will give a lot of fans what they really want. So I'm all for it personally. Oh, and, and it's beneficial for Fox, too, because, you know, a lot of the stuff that they've already done is going to be a part of the, the Disney, you know, streaming service and stuff. So. Yeah. But can I also say that one, we have enough uh, services, streaming services, and on top of that, we don't know how much it's going to cost. There are good things and there's bad things. Yes, we're going to get a whole bunch of different properties, but at the same time, what does that mean for you know shows that are already in the works and planning now? What happens to the shows that's going on Freeform? What happens to the shows that's going on Hulu? What's going to happen to season? What are we in three of? Um, what is it? Iron, well not Iron Fist, um, whatever the, the Marvel shows on Netflix. Everything seems to be completely in limbo. And they don't really have the streaming serve. They don't have all of the information. Only thing that we know is that we're getting all of the TV shows, all of the cartoons, all of the movies. And then they said on top of that that we're going to probably get the um, direct, this is how it's confusing, the theatrical release of, say, Star Wars is going to premiere at the same time on the streaming service. So that's where it gets a little murky. What does that mean for other companies and other studios? What does that mean for residuals? So it may be like great and perfect, but at the same time, this is a lot of questions that are going unanswered that we just don't know. And to bring back WWE, for example, when they had streaming service, the WWE Network, a lot of people lost out a lot of payouts. They lost a lot of money from that. So while we we're all like, yay, $9.99, the people who are actually putting on the show, they are not getting any type of cut that is substantial for them, you know, to, to have an income. So a lot of things is a little murky right now. And what does that do to movie theaters? If the, you know, what is the next one? The Last Jedi, for example. If The Last Jedi is to come on the streaming service on the same day that it comes in theaters, I'm going to stay home and watch it on the streaming service. What does that do to theaters that's expecting that money? Yeah, you have AMC is perfectly fine. Lowe's is fine. What happens to the small, you know, mom and pop theater in the middle of, I don't know, Augusta, Georgia? What does that do to them? So I think for me, I'm not exactly for this whole deal. And I think that, you know, it's just a little bit ridiculous. And we don't know the price. They can easily charge like $20, $25, especially if we're getting, you know, direct releases. So I'm not exactly for this. And then what does that mean to the property that is able to, you know, do go darker? So Deadpool, like I was saying, what happens to Deadpool? Are they going to split it where it's like, here's more of our, our adult theme stuff? or And here's more of the kids? Or is everything family friendly? What would happen to the Punisher? So that's just what I wonder. Yeah, that that is definitely a concern, you know, like, because um, we know Disney likes to be family friendly. So that is definitely a concern that they would kind of water down Deadpool and, you know, Daredevil, Punisher, all those sort of things that are a bit dark and gritty. I mean, um, Disney itself is just now trying to, you know, incorporate all things. They just ran a gay storyline on one of their TV shows. Wait, but, you know, Disney. Oh. <laughs> You're like, oh. But I just mean, like, they're a little behind the times where they're trying to slowly ease audiences into you know, issues that's going on now. Meanwhile, you know, you have Deadpool, who's just, you know, he's saying that he's, uh, what do you call it? 
no sexual, trisexual, bisexual thing. So how is that? Gonna, they're, they're doing that type of storyline in the movies. How does that translate when you bring it over to the streaming service? It's a good, it's a good point. All, all around. So let, let me make a few comments. For, first and foremost, if, if Disney wants to buy any of the Netflix shows, please, they need to buy The Defenders and, and, and Iron Fist because both of those shows are very, very disappointing. Uh, I don't care if they get rid of them. But, they need to part, but, but I will say there's a show that's coming on this Friday that's pretty damn awesome. That's all I can say about it because we're still under embargo. Um, but I will say this as far as Marvel is concerned. Um, you know, uh, the Disney, the reports that Gary mentioned, I, I did see that, you know, Disney intends to make their service cheaper than Netflix so they can cause the issue with Netflix. Uh, so you, I don't, I don't really know what, where, where that's going to go. Well, how is that possible? Cause I even Netflix is raising their prices. Well, yeah, Netflix is going to be eleven ninety nine, right? They're going to. Um, oh, go ahead. Finish what you were saying. Oh no! I think Netflix. Yeah, they're going to increase the price to eleven ninety nine. I thought, or either ten ninety nine or eleven ninety nine next year. Um, yeah, that that's that's what the strategy is because what Disney wants to do. Because Disney, you gotta remember, they can afford to go low at first, right? So they're going to go low at first to put pressure on Netflix because they know that once they announce Star Wars content, people are going to switch from Netflix to Disney quick. You know, so like you know, cheaper entry price and they're getting Star Wars, like they're going to jump right over to Disney. And then, you know, once um, Netflix is kind of messed up from, from, you know, a lot of people leaving, then they're probably going to put the price up, you know, and, but it, it might, let's, let's just hope that Netflix can continue to sustain themselves during that, you know, level of competition because it could, it could get dark for Netflix, you know, if they're not. It's, it's at the end of the day, what does Netflix have? They have what? Stranger Things. They no longer have House of Cards. They have just Stranger Things. And are we going to still see that same type of subscription for people just wanting to watch Stranger Things? They, 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 they wait, hold on. I thought they, they also have um, your favorite show, Black Mirror. They still have that. So... Black, okay. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. They, they don't have House of Cards anymore. We know that. And, 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 and let me just give a, a, make a little quick comment. This is, what ha this is why when people have too much power, it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. You know, wink, wink. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I mean at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, you know the, big, the big issue with me, when I heard this news about them potentially buying out Fox, I said, yeah, that's great. But I instantly thought of, of Deadpool because the fact that that movie was rated R and it worked so well, and then Logan, another movie, another movie that was rated R, it worked so well. I don't want to see this come over to Disney and now we have to make it less violent or less all this other stuff. I, I don't want to see that. Now, with that said, a, a certain show that's coming out this Friday is pretty damn violent. Uh, so I don't really know if they would consider making a, any severe changes to Deadpool, but definitely the cursing, the swearing, some of that stuff is going to be cut down. And then the violence, certain stuff getting chopped off, a lot of that's going to be cut down, I would think. But um, Yeah, absolutely. And look at Runaways. That is not exactly violent, but that has to do a lot with, you know, other elements of voodoo and, and stuff. How does that go about? Yeah, you're right. I, you know, I, I have no idea. Um, but the fact that you said that the talks are stalled in, instead of canceled, I thought I think is very interesting. So uh, something could still happen. Um, I don't really know what's going to happen at the moment. I, what I will say is, you know, yeah, Marvel does have a little bit of time uh, because of the fact that, you know, next year is just the beginning of Infinity War. Uh, obviously, everybody will be talking about that. And then, of course, the aftermath, they don't have to worry about that until 2019, 2020. So they have a little bit of time uh, before they have to worry about it. But they definitely need to figure this, this out at some point in time if they are able to make an offer and if Fox is willing to take the offer. Now, one last thing I will say is I did see that they had a trailer for the New Mutants that, you know, I saw that when I went to the theater last weekend to see Thor. And, you know, I don't really, I don't, I mean, I haven't been watching, I haven't looked into any of the comics regarding those particular characters, but I thought to myself, I was like, 
I don't think this looks necessarily bad, but uh, I don't know what to think about it. Now, Dana, you, you said that you've seen some of it, correct? You want New Mutants? Yes. Yes. It's dark. It's really dark. <laughs> it's weird because of how dark that they were able to go. It feels more like a psychological thriller than more of a, you know, X-Men mutant thing. I think their powers, to me, it feels like everything is secondary, which makes the story even stronger. Interesting. So, yeah, I, I honestly like this direction of how they're going. I did not understand what the heck it was that I was seeing, but whatever it did, it worked. Absolutely. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, you know, hopefully the deal does eventually go through. Um, and, you know, they think about the fact, that, like I said, with Deadpool, I, I do not want to see that. I want that to remain the same. It's not guaranteed to be the same if Disney takes it over. That That is one thing that I don't really want to see that happen. But uh, obviously, those that want to see X-Men crossover with the Avengers, it will be a big deal for that reason. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah. Any final thoughts on this topic before we move on to the next? If they can just get the rights to Fantastic Four, I'm good. We don't even need the whole deal. Just give me Fantastic Four. I'm good. You mean the uh, Floptastic Four, right? <laughs> it, it, it feels like anytime somebody does a movie of Fantastic Four, they do a horrible job. So I would hope that Marvel, yes, they would do a better job. Disney can get ownership of that. They would do a better job with that. But we'll see. <laughs> 